can't talk about rally games without somebody in earshot bringing up Richard Burns Rally. It's often lauded as the greatest of all time rally simulator, with some of its most dedicated players matter-of-factly declaring anything and everything else to be a redundant waste of time. I primarily play Codemasters rally games, namely Dirt Rally 2 and EAWRC, and the thing is, I've tried, tried, and tried again over the years to enjoy Richard Burns Rally because I really want to like it, but I've never been able to muster any real enthusiasm for it. If anything, I barely touch it because more often than not, I don't really enjoy playing it. More frustratingly, I've always struggled to put my finger on why exactly I don't like it. So that's what I'm going to do today. Keep in mind, I will be talking about the Rally Sim Fans version of the game, which you can find with the link in the video description. I want to start by touching on Richard Burns Rally's strengths, because I think the game has a loyal fan base for some very good reasons. To start with, it's free. Not in a free to play and then hit you with a tidal wave of microtransactions kind of way, but free in a this is 20 year old abandoned wear that you couldn't buy a new copy of even if you wanted to kind of way. So regardless of what the actual legality of the situation is, it's easy enough to get your hands on it without costing you a cent. Another direct benefit of the game being two decades old is that it's very easy to run. If you have a remotely modern computer, you'll probably be just fine pumping out high frame rates here, which really comes in clutch for VR users. Obviously VR can be very heavy with modern games, so the modest baseline requirements of Richard Burns Rally makes it far more accessible for everyone. Of course, Richard Burns Rally's real claim to fame is its driving physics. With the latest next generation physics, or NGP mod, I have to agree it's very good. Best in class even. In the past, I did not enjoy prior versions of NGP, namely version 5, as I felt it was excessively slippery on gravel. At the time of writing, 7.3 is the current version, and I think that the levels of grip feel about in line with what I'd expect them to be. So if older versions turned you off, it's worth giving it another chance. One specific thing I've always noticed compared to the Codemasters games is that NGP simulates the sensation of weight, particularly the way it transfers, in a way that I think looks and feels quite convincing. I also think that tarmac driving actually feels pretty decent in this as well. Even though EAWRC considerably improved its tarmac handling from Dirt Rally 2, it continues to be Codemasters' weak spot, and I think it feels better here. Ultimately, I'll say that I think the NGP driving model feels predictable and intuitive, with solid force feedback and extensive vehicle tuning options to go along with it. The game also has a lot of stages and cars thanks to the modding community, and since these mods aren't commercial products, they're not bound by any licensing red tape that normally gets in the way. For instance, the Toyota Sea Like car is a glaring emission from the vehicle lineup in the Codemasters games, and it's a favourite car of mine, so it's great to be able to jump into it here in Richard Burns Rally to knock out a few stages. The Rally Sim Fans package also receives continued development with updates and new stage inclusions. The competitive scene is quite active, so there's always online rallies to participate in. Pace notes are modifiable, so you can change them yourself or download someone else's. The damage system is quite punishing, so there's a palpable sense of danger and risk, particularly if you're participating in a longer rally. The F-Mod sound effects are pretty decent. I don't think it sounds as good as the Codemasters games, but it's way better than the vacuum cleaners that you get from Killaton. Peripheral compatibility is good from my experience, and hell, you can even save your replays, a form of black magic that Codemasters have somehow never managed to reverse engineer. Unfortunately, it's not all sunshine and blowjobs in the land of Richard Burns Rally. The first problem I ran into is how much of a pain in the ass it is to dial in all of the settings from a fresh install. For many people, I would expect the force feedback would be the first point of call, and it's a great example of the game's problems. When you're in-game, if you go into the settings, you'll find this adjustment bar for the force feedback, but no matter how much I played around with this, I could never get it feeling quite right. As it turns out, there's additional force feedback settings in the Rally Sim Fans launcher. It's a bit unintuitive. You want to turn it up all the way in game and then set the number in the launcher as high as you can until you hit your desired level of strength, because setting these numbers higher makes the force feedback weaker. It's just a shame that this process is divided up between two completely different menus that you can't access at the same time. 
and compared to modern games, it's still not very tunable. There's no way that I'm aware of for you to adjust the specific force feedback elements, such as self-aligning torque or suspension forces. The real problem here is that the newcomer experience with Richard Burns Rally is so heavily front-loaded with these kinds of problems, and first impressions last a lifetime. After you get your force feedback sorted, you'll probably start wondering why some of the stages have these distracting seams in the road, or how the hell you're supposed to turn off the on-screen callouts, or why the gauges aren't working. There's always something you've got to fix. Even after getting everything set up to your liking, the irritation still extends to Rally Sim Fan's update process. For instance, despite selecting all of the stages during installation, I'm still missing a bunch of them in-game, as indicated by the red text, even though I have plenty of free disk space. But when I run the installer again to update the game, it doesn't give me any clear visual indication of what content I do or don't already have, so I have to note down what I'm missing while I'm in game, and then scroll through the laundry list of content and select it manually for installation. Compared to owning a game on Steam and having it automatically handle updates for you, these sorts of hassles are a blast from the past that I can really do without. Another crappy part of the experience that you'll want to deal with immediately is the stock pace notes, which leave a lot to be desired. I have three main issues with them. Firstly, rather than being numbered, they are descriptive. For example, the call might be medium right, concentrate, instead of three or four right, which I am personally not a fan of. Shut up. Don't tell me how to drive. Secondly, there's a bunch of instances where the calls come way too late. The timing can really be all over the place. And lastly, they're missing specific callouts for certain types of obstacles, chicanes being the most common example. There weren't any chicanes that I'm aware of in the vanilla game, but they're pretty common in the mod stages, which is a big problem. I use the Lupus Pace Notes pack in conjunction with the Darren Blythe Numeric mod, which is the closest parallel that I'm aware of to how the notes are in the Codemasters games, which is what I'm comfortable with. There's other options around, but whatever you do, don't put it off. It should be one of the first things that you set up to avoid frustration. As for some other miscellaneous problems that I've noticed, the game has no meaningful single player component as the NGP mod breaks the career mode, the time trial leaderboards are useless, and it doesn't help that the results aren't filtered in any way, so it's just a list of everyone who has completed the stage in any and every car. The replay system lacks basic functionality such as fast forward or rewind, which makes watching back or capturing a specific moment needlessly time consuming. For a prehistoric game like this, the install size is titanically bloated, clearing over 125 gigabytes. And the damage system treats all cars as if they are front engined, so you might find that you somehow totaled your engine because you hit a small fence when driving a Porsche 911. But setting those things aside, what really deals the killing blow to my enjoyment of Richard Burns Rally is that I don't find it immersive, and I think the major cause of that is the visuals. Everyone has their own personal baseline for what is visually acceptable. The problem for me is that Richard Burns Rally routinely drops below my baseline, which tears me right out of the experience. Now, hold up. I'm sure at least a few of you will be foaming at the mouth and bashing out a comment that I'm a shallow graphics snob. But that's not true. For the record, I absolutely do not need the newest, shiniest, highest fidelity graphics to be immersed. What I do need is for the visuals to be consistent and to keep the graphical bugs or other distracting visual oddities to a bare minimum. To quickly step outside of racing games to give you an example of this, do any of you like rocks, stones or cars? because Deep Rock Galactic is a game that I've played a fair bit of, and while it's not a simulation style game, I find it immersive despite its low polygon aesthetic. When I boot it up, I get drawn into its world of space dwarfs, mining minerals, splatting bugs and blowing off steam at the bar. The game manages this because it sets its visual style, which I find pleasing to the eye, and delivers it in a consistent, seamless way. I can say the same thing for much older sprite-based games too, such as Chrono Trigger. When I start playing it and I give myself a little time to adjust to it, I find that I never get unwittingly ejected from its world because it maintains its art style consistently. With Richard Burns Rally, while the vanilla stages are certainly quite dated, I find them to be perfectly acceptable looking. 
Compared to modern games, the poly count is low, the textures are straight up standard definition, and the lighting is primitive, but you can tell that these environments were put together by talented professional artists. Within the confines of them being two decades old, there's great attention to detail and clever layering of landscape features, which prevents the environments from looking barren. The visuals start to come apart at the seams when you jump into the mod stages, because the level of quality that you'll experience is a violent roller coaster. There's stages that have clearly had a ton of work and love poured into them. These kinds of stages comfortably match the quality of the vanilla content and exceed them in some ways. But then there's stages that, by comparison, look like they're from an N64 homebrew. Honestly, I think the Rally Sim fans team could do a better job of being more discriminating with what they choose to include in their distribution, because some of this stuff would have Anthony Fantano making a video about it. The same problem extends to the car models as well, particularly the interior modelling. Some cars, like the Toyota Chalicha that I mentioned earlier, look quite good, but then you've got cars like the Group A Mazda 323, which don't leave a whole lot to write home about. I've shielded pretty hard for the cockpit camera in a couple of my prior videos, but given how severely lackluster they often look in Richard Burns Rally, I can understand why you might prefer to just stick to the bonnet cam and save yourself the disappointment. On a similar note, one of my absolute favourite things in the Codemasters Rally games are the night stages. Not only are they challenging due to the reduced visibility, but I really like how the roads take on this new, unfamiliar vibe, almost like they've been transformed into an entirely different stage. It's such an immensely cool atmosphere to be barreling a car down a road and watching the warm glow of your headlights illuminate a small slice of the world in front of you, as the shadows are dancing around to your car's movements. As for Richard Burns Rally, I couldn't be bothered to earn my PhD in janky mods to get the night stages up and running, but from what I've seen on YouTube, I'm glad I didn't waste my time. On top of these problems, don't forget the severe pop-in that some of the stages suffer from, the weird steam effect that billows right through the windshield and cockpit after going through water splashes, and all of the cardboard cutouts that people keep leaving on the side of the road. Only then can you start to get a picture of what a visual mess this game is, and with the other user experience issues piled on top, why I don't enjoy playing it. To some extent, these kinds of problems are to be expected when you're playing an old, heavily modified game. Demanding it to be as seamless and consistent of a ride as a modern vanilla title is pretty unrealistic. Ultimately though, that fact leaves me with some very conflicted feelings. On one hand, I feel a bit sad and disappointed that something more modern and polished has yet to come along to definitively supersede Richard Burns' Rally. It's like the Millennium Falcon of Rally games. It's capable of a lot, but at first glance, man, it's hard not to feel exactly the same way Luke did. What a piece of junk! The game has well and truly earned its retirement and is long past due to pass on the torch to new blood, but here we are, stuck in limbo. Perhaps with more time and development, BeamNG could be that game, or maybe a Seto Corsa Evo will be better equipped to fill that rally niche than its predecessor. One day, hell might even freeze over, and Codemasters will achieve undeniable driving model supremacy. In the meantime, I'll cross my fingers in the hope that a legitimate new competitor enters the scene one of these days. It's sorely needed. On the other hand, I find myself trying over and over to forgive Richard Burns Rally's many flaws and appreciate it for what it is when I stop to consider its legacy. For those of you who are unaware of the history, in 2001, Richard Burns was behind the wheel of the iconic Bug Eye Subaru Impreza, and he won the World Rally Championship. To this day, he remains the last British driver to win that title, so to say that he's still a big deal for tea-drinking rally fans is an understatement. Richard himself was quite involved in the game's development, but about a year after release, and four years to the day after he became world champion, Richard passed away from a brain tumour. So when you think about it, he spent a significant amount of his final days helping to build the foundations of this simulator. 
With that context in mind, I think it's quite wholesome that after all this time, the game still has an active modding and competitive community. Even if the results aren't always my cup of tea, I really respect and admire that these modders still contribute to this game, because it's clearly done out of passion that Richard himself helped to inspire. This game is a solidified part of Richard's legacy, and I think if there's anything that people want from life, it's to be remembered when they're gone. And I think this game is a part of why people still fondly remember Richard Burns.